when you cook with less energy, when you have a house that is more insulated, when you eat more vegetable protein, you save money. And those are really important drivers, especially for areas of the world where resources are limited. People can do the right thing and also save at the same time. Hello, this is the Weekly Tradecast, a podcast brought to you by UNCTAD, the UN's trade and development body. I'm Sarah Tons. We're exploring how major events are shaping trade and development and how that affects billions of people around the world. Today, we're talking about cheap and easy ways for all of us to be greener. Protecting our environment is a vital task and everyone can play a part. The three R's, reduce, reuse and recycle, are a good starting point. We can cut down on plastic by using cloth shopping bags. We can take our own mugs to the coffee shop rather than getting disposable cups every time. Buying things secondhand and repairing rather than replacing are other ways to cut down on pollution and our carbon footprint. Well, joining me now to talk more about some simple changes that we can all make to help protect our planet is UNCTAD economist Enrique Puccini, who specializes in trade, energy and the environment. He's a keen recycler himself and has a collection of stainless steel dishes that he expects to last forever. Well, good luck with that, Enrique. (laughs) Thanks for coming here today. Now, protecting our planet obviously is a daunting task for the average person. So what's the scale of the challenges and why is it so important for everyone to help? Thanks, Sarah, for inviting me here today. As consumers, we play an important part in creating demand for better things in terms of environmental impact and also reducing demand for things that are very harmful for the environment. So thinking as an individual, you are more important than you believe you are because we can make choices that really, really make a difference. What are some of the cheap and easy things then that we can all do at home to reduce our carbon footprint? I love this question because I often ask what I can do more to improve my uh, consumption habits and also to lower the costs of my consumption. For example, make reusables part of your life. Like always carry a bottle with you when you go somewhere, when you travel, because that will really save you time and uh, and worries. But you always have a vessel, a safe vessel that you can trust to replenish your water needs. The same with a bag, like put a, a shopping bag, you mentioned a cloth bag, in your work bag or in your car so that you can always have or count on that in order to do your groceries. But make sure that your shopping bag or your reusable bag is really reused because in order to really pay off in terms of environment impact, you need to reuse it around 150 times over three years. So don't buy a cloth bag and use it only once. Use more efficient ways of cooking. For example, learn how to use a pressure cooker. Buy a pressure cooker. A pressure cooker requires far less energy to cook the same meals than a normal pan because it really retains a high temperature and retains heat inside. So it cuts the the cooking time by two thirds. Also walk. I mean, walking to places will save you money, will make you healthier, and it will cost you nothing. And it's the best way to really avoid emissions in transportation. Another thing that I often think about is how we eat, right? Incorporating more vegetable protein in our meals. For example, schools in many countries are already having one or two vegan days a week in, in school cafeterias, but also in your own kitchen. Try to use more or at least a a higher percentage of vegetable protein, peas, beans, the soy, texturized soy protein, and other ways, even if you mix that with uh, animal meat, that would already help a lot to change your personal impact. And finally, Sarah, what you said about reusing things, buy secondhand, buy in the secondary markets. We are all sitting on a ton of gold. Our homes uh, ha- have a lot of unused or used clothes, furniture, sometimes stored that we don't use anymore. Imagine if we all listed those to people who are seeking those products, we can make money with this. And there are thousands and thousands of dollars under each home's uh, basements stored and collecting dust while we could be putting this on secondary markets. So if you buy a used uh, leather jacket, for example, you're really vouching in favor of the environment compared to buying it new. Yes, we all love vintage, don't we? Okay. Now, I have to ask, of course, about these sustainable plates. So what have you been doing at home to reduce, reuse and recycle? You've got some interesting ideas, I know. I started with this fascination of durability, which is very common in South Asia, right? In in Bangladesh, in Pakistan, in India. 
They have a long tradition of using stainless steels, using copper as a normal utensils to, to eat. And those things last forever. I've also started uh, collecting the, the jars and glasses from products that I bought to reuse them as containers for, for pasta and for other materials. But I'm still struggling to find a way to buy the pasta from the supermarket or buy the grains in a way that it doesn't involve plastics. Mm-hmm. The delivery channels from uh, the businesses are quite f- focused on, on packaging, on a, a lot of packaging material, also to preserve the hygiene. But it's not like this in everywhere, right? I remember from the old days, you could really buy loose grains and bring your own bag to right. wrap it. I know that it already exists and you find this in some supermarkets, but it still costs more than the package product, something that really can be worked out by supermarket and retail chains and producers in order for consumers to have a choice. We all like transport, right? We like to go to places we are happy when we, we travel. But very few people actually seek rides uh, from others because there's so many vehicles, cars, trains, boats going to places with empty space, so with uh, idle capacity. For example, when you go to a city, I often go to Zurich or Lausanne or Paris, announce that uh, there's a couple of seats free in your vehicle and allow people to, to join you in your ride. The same, if you want to go, seek people who are going to that th- destination. There are many platforms to do that online today where you can just uh, purchase uh, a seat. I, I guarantee you to be cheaper than, than buying a train or airplane ticket and to be definitely a win in terms of environment. And finally, there are some other traditional technologies that were very used in the past, I I myself from Brazil, where we can really resuscitate them and and reuse them more, like gravity filters. For example, you don't need a plastic bottle to bring you safe water. You can put water from the tap in most countries of the world in a gravity filter, which is basically a filter, a water filter with a ceramic part in the middle where the water passes through the ceramic and it's filtered that way and it drips slowly in in the second compartment below, so it keeps the water safe for consumption. This type of technology is a novel technology. It exists, it's produced. It was used uh, large scale in the past. Today it's not used in large scale. It could be used again and it could really solve uh, water distribution problems in countries where the the, the distribution itself is is weak and the reliance on plastic is very high. Some great ideas there. Thank you. Now, what about the very committed person who wants to take it to the next level? Someone like yourself, perhaps. What would you suggest? There are a couple of things that uh, the, the person can do to go beyond. One of them, for example, is to refurbish. That's what urban planners often say, right? Refurbish your home to improve the thermal performance of your home. We don't really think about that, but uh, heating a place, having a hot shower, those things have a massive environmental impact. When you are having a hot shower, it's the same energy used as a sports car in high speed in the highway. It's, it really uses a lot of advantage. So you want to perhaps re- refurbish your home, change the windows, change materials to improve the thermal insulation so that your home uses less energy as a whole. You might also want to install in your, in your home or when you're building your home, to install a rainwater collection system that uh, accumulates water in a cistern that you can use for all sorts of usages for uh, you can even filter that water and use it for shower uh, cooking but ideally to maintain the house like for cleaning for washing you can collect rainwater instead of relying on water from the grid another thing you can do is to not buy an electric vehicle because okay this is a little better, better than combustion engine but the best vehicle is the one that uh, it's used most of the time is the one where the asset the, so the car is used most of the time so enter a vehicle sharing scheme That's a good idea. I hadn't thought of that one. All these positive changes are great, but tell me what difference are they really going to make when you think about the massive amounts of pollution that industries are creating, like energy transport and manufacturing? The whole economic system is designed to meet demand, right? To meet the desires of those who are purchasing. So, If we start buying products, let's say food or grains, without packaging, or we start demanding this, I I believe there's a big likelihood that supermarkets will start and and retail stores will start to offer that. The same with with the sharing schemes, the same with different type of filtering and water or cooking foods. Your individual behavior is more important than you think. For example, the whole branding and and 
certification schemes adopted by many brands are a response to that because they want to tell you how their products are being made, if they contain pesticides, GMOs, if they are made in an organic fashion, their carbon footprints. So these efforts of companies, which cost a lot of money to communicate how things are made, is already a sign in this direction. Consumer matters. So what you buy, how you buy, the way you buy, is it's very impactful to change the design of the production and distribution systems of things. People need their needs met, businesses need to be viable, but also uh, governments need to plug what we call market failures. For example, the excessive use of plastics, uh, it's uh, uncontrolled dissemination in the economy, and also a uh, high uh, energy consumption by, by houses, by the, our transportation systems, by our food systems. All those things need to be plugged in a way. So this is why we have a multilateral processes to try to standardize rules, for example, on how plastics can be used. There is an ongoing process now being discussed to create a global treaty against plastic pollution, which will control plastics across the value chain of plastics, uh, polymer making, um, pl plastics into product transformation, and also how plastics are used and disposed of. So that's the type of economy we want. On the other hand, we want to favor, uh, facilitate, even subsidize activities that can regenerate nature and that can enhance health. For example, the differentiated tax schemes for a co-ownership of cars instead of a private ownership, or investments in city design that favor walking or more efficient uh, transmission systems for power or in many other ways that can really make us get there. We usually think that the individual action matters very little, right? We are so small compared to the entire economy. But that's not really true. Remember, individual people have thousands of connections and we talk to people, we, we purchase things, we put our money to work. So uh, changing your behavior is bigger uh, and talking about it is bigger than yourself. And one important thing that I really believe is transformative is when a greener behavior is met by economic savings. And these you can mm. find, for example, in energy efficiency. Usually when you cook with less energy, when you have a house that is more insulated, you save money. When you eat more vegetable protein, you save money. And those are really important drivers, especially for areas of the world where resources are limited. People can do the right thing and also save at the same time. It sounds like it's a win-win to make those changes, doesn't it, Enrique? Well, thank you so much. Some great tips there. That was Unctad's Henri Piccini, who was this week's guest. Tune into the Weekly Tradecast next week and every week for more insights on the most pressing issues around the world of trade and development. And there's even more on our website, unctad.org. I'm Sarah Toms in Geneva. Goodbye for now. <laughs>